Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and all in between. Jason, my brother, how are you? I'm great, brother. How you doing? Right on. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I was, uh, literally ran in like, you know, five minutes be before everyone got the link and yeah, crazy day getting ready for the fest this weekend, right. running around, picking up instruments for the kids and stuff. And mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. So let's bring on our uh, our record critic at large, Mr. Fred Bonanno. Hey, Fred. Good evening, my rock and roll brothers. Cheers, my brother. So, uh, Fred, tell us about your get today. Well, we are privileged to be joined by Dean the Drum Machine Roberts, the original and current drummer for one of the most underrated metal bands from the 80s. Absolutely. They were known as a Triple Axe Attack, Leather Wolf. And they have regrouped with a new lineup and released Kill the Hunted in November of last year. So it is a pleasure to have Dean Roberts joining Creativity Talking. Yeah, and you know what's really great is like I've talked to a bunch of people this week and I'm like, yeah, dude, we got Dean coming on from Leather Wolf and they're like, Leather Wolf? Fuck yeah! <laughs> you know what I mean? So right. speaking of fuck yeah, Mr. Dean Roberts. Hello yeah, to Dean. all. What's up, gentlemen? Hey, Dean. What's up, guys? So yeah, man. So how does it feel that like you guys like have turned into a like you have a cult following, you know? Um, like there's a, a bunch of people who just love your band. It's 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 the music, man. I mean, the songs are pretty cool. Uh, right, absolutely. You know, there's there's like not many sleeper leather wolf songs, you know. <laughs> well, you got the you got the calling, you got hideaway, but then then you go to like rise or fall or. Gypsies and Thieves, or Spirits in the Wind, or Black Knight, uh, or all the, the uh, you know, the World Asylum record, Behind the Gun, or mm -hmm. these songs right here, The Henchman, which is kind of funny, because The Henchman was written in 1982. Oh, really? Yeah. Didn't make the cut. I still don't get it, because it's a killer song. Yeah. Was it yeah. just of the time, or is that just what the producer said? Or is it a band? No, no, producers never really messed with us. It was just, you know, what, okay. what, what the guys decided to do you know and um those guys just didn't finish the henchman i thought it was killer you know but yeah. it, they didn't finish it back then so when it came time to do it again i mean jeff and i were thinking about redoing it for the world asylum but it just uh didn't really kind of fit you know those songs yeah. so we just right. i recorded my drums and we never got to it you know yeah. so this time around i wanted to do it you know absolutely okay so what 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 year did you get signed? You got signed in... I think 84, we got signed to Tropical for that um, EP that turned into an LP. And I think in 86, we got signed with Island. Okay. Right. And how was your time at Island Records? They seem to have a lot of great talent. At that Big point. label back yeah. in the day, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're kind of like an AM label, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and they're killer. You know, you got all those multi-platinum acts working with them. But I just don't think that they were... They were uh, well, Anthrax was on there too, and they're another yeah. killer band. Oh, right. yeah. 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 Sure. They were kind of they're they're different than us, so they just fit in a little different realm than we did, you know. I just but, don't yeah. think um I mean the deal with metal is you're not gonna get the radio. So if, if you can go out and right. you know, if you have good music and you can go play a tour and just get your feet in the door with the crowd and you know, right mm -hmm. that'll just pretty much help you with the future, you know. We we just yeah. never got that. Yeah, and too, I, I think maybe you guys uh, suffered from when the record labels just hired anyone with a can of Aquanet who could play a chord. It it muddied the water for people who could actually play. Yeah. You know, not, I'm not discounting any bands per se, but, you, you know, like it got watered down very heavily, very quickly. But it's you were signed before that. It's a business, man. And, and um, you just you pick a bunch of bands, you throw them out there, and whatever one – flies you just invest in you know it's it's yeah. it's not it's not um that tricky you know and and yeah. usually all the the big ones that make it like the u2s and all the bon jovis and iron maidens and stuff that just helps that just helps you know the whole system work you know right and then of course so. mtv was a huge boom to the genre of music that we love you know mm -hmm. yeah it's a direct link to the to the people you know yeah you know, yeah, and it, it added a new aspect too the the visual. You know what I mean? Like you know, prior to that, we were all just you know, 
you know, obviously buying records and, and, and magazines and, you know, trying to glean whatever we could from that, but that just, you know, opened up a whole other, um, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Well, 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 it's just like, another, it's another tool to market, yeah. you know, and, right. yeah. you know, metal, I don't know, was super popular, you know, with, with the marketing people, you know? Right. Yeah. Well, in Europe, it's really popular. Right. Yeah. You know, so it's, you know, it's, it's luck of the draw with that stuff, you know? You know, and it seemed yeah. to me at the, at that time, all the people running, you know, the marketing departments and the, at the labels, all I came from, you know, the drama club in high school, which listened to different type of stuff. And they just didn't, they never really, it could have been a lot, you know, could have been pushed a lot better, I think, but, you know. Mm -hmm. Who knows, out. man? At, at the end of the day, you know, you, you get a product, you try to sell it, you know. Oh, absolutely. The, yeah. A lot of the people are just more into simpler stuff. Yeah. Stuff yeah. that you don't have to really spend much time thinking about, you know. And that's not yeah. Leather Wolf. You know, you yeah. really got to pay attention. No. It's like, oh, no. I had worked for the software company and, uh, this is after I was a special effects guy, tour consultant, hurt my back, went through surgery, blah, 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 rehab, doing this. It took us 18 months to get a meeting with the vice president of Sony Records, and we had this thing where you could literally jam on a 14.4 fucking modem almost in real time. There's a little bit of latency, but it was a MIDI signal. And then basically... Everyone was, you know, you're going to be able to be taught by Steve Vai, Eddie Van Halen, Eric Clapton. You know, then you go on bass, you're going to be taught by these guys, da, 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 and all this stuff. So we're doing it at the studios with G3. We had already done a show with uh, Herbie Hancock. He was in Sheffield, England, and his band was in Vegas. And we're like, oh, this would be great for the college market. If you have four guys in a band, they could play four gigs, have a screen behind them, have one guy in the band in that you know if they couldn't pay, if they didn't pay a lot but everyone could make more if there was a smaller band that kind of thing you know and you could jam up to 17 people could fit in a jam room uh, so we we did this thing and it worked and everything and the you know the 72 year old vice president comes down and he's like how do you win and dude our, <laughs> steve i er, er, everyone's just like oh how do you win? You know, we, everyone just started quietly packing their shit up. He was no way. He didn't get it. He would never get it. Right. You know, you know we had this whole elaborate presentation. It was going to be really cool. How do you win? Oh, dude. And that's part of why the music business died, you know. They should have mm -hmm. had some younger blood up at the top, I think. But well, Yeah, that's, that's, a whole, that's, a, that's stuff I just don't really think about. You know, I mean, I just like music because you get to play and you get to write. Yeah, you know, and you got a hundred percent say in, in 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 your product, you know. Yeah, you know, the politics absolutely. is a whole different deal, you know. Yeah. And now, like the great thing about the internet is everyone can release their music and market it. The bad thing about the internet is everyone can release their music. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, there's, no, there's no there's no more money in rock and roll, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah pop's definitely uh, killing it right now. Sad, I mean. Yeah. You know. At least for bands like us, you know, it's just tricky. It's tricky to make some money, get on the road, and play. You know, yeah. play for a couple months. Right. No. Yep. And now business. that all the all the costs have gone up, a lot of guys oh. retired, and you know, yeah. now they want this out of your merch. And remember that, you know, in the '80s, we could go watch a festival for like fifteen bucks. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You no know, beers for like two dollars. I still have a lot of my old ticket stubs, man. Like Dude, I worked for you, you know, nine dollars. I remember when I was sixteen years old working part time at Kmart with my lot with my fucking you know George Lynch hair, and yeah. I could still go to four shows a month and buy my pot and buy my beer. Yeah. Have a girlfriend, take her out to dinner, and still have money left over to throw in the El Camino. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so it's you know, so who is jacking those prices up? Well, well, I mean, it's got to be the the big corp, you know. I don't know. Yeah. I, I think there's a middleman selling tickets, and there, there's something going on, you know. Yeah, because like now, I, I'm lucky if I can see a show a year now. Like I have to save up for one, you know what I mean, and then go like, okay, uh, which one do I want to see? Because you know, I can't it's see right. them all. It's too, it's too expensive, man. Yeah, yeah I like it way back, you know. Then it was it was it was affordable. You know, you yeah. go see Ted Nugent, you know, Toto. Yeah, you know, at the LA Coliseum for like 15 bucks, you know, right. you have to pay for parking, you know, it was right. cool. And, 
and whoever came through your area, I mean, you could, you know, we'll depending, see them. Yeah, yeah, you could see a ball. Yeah, you know, it wasn't out of the realm of possibility, but uh, right, it wasn't. Hey, what what show is he going to this year or this summer? Yeah, it's like what show is he going to this week? Yeah. You know, my uh, my son, who actually today, as a matter of fact, is turning sixteen. Um, you know, he's starting to play guitar and all that, and he's you know he's starting to finally you know listen, and he's listening to a lot of old old music, mostly classic rock stuff. Yeah, and um, I think it was probably back in March the Eagles were coming through. I'm in South Carolina, yeah, and they were playing in Columbia, so uh, you know he was really getting into them. He was wearing Hotel California and all that, you know, that kind of thing. And um, I said, well, you know, I, I need to take him to the show. Well. For the two of us to go, I mean, it was like seven hundred bucks. <laughs> you know, I was, I was about to have a stroke. I'm like, I never in my life have I spent this kind of money to go to a show. Oh yeah, well we're <laughs> no. yeah. Me and Jason were joking the other night. You know, yeah. like, hey, Bruce Springsteen. You know, how much for your front row? Oh, the five thousand dollars, and it's worth it. <laughs> it's like, I don't. Know I mean, anything. now, now that being said, it was fantastic. I mean, like, yeah. you know, it, it was a killer show. But, you know, just like, you know, what we were just talking about, you know, me going back to being 16 myself and paying 10 bucks, 12 bucks, you know, for a, for a ticket for a, a major, you know, touring act. It was like, you know, yeah, I think um, I, I'm sure back in the 80s, the Eagles were probably just as good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe even better. Right. Right. Yeah. And Maybe you they could carry still it. sing the key B, you know, and they could still hit the notes and hold them, you know. Oh, for sure. Right. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. I remember in in the seventies, a little bit older than you guys here, and the uh, the radio station in town, the Loop, used to have what they call the Super Bowl and the World Series of Rock, and they'd be at White Sox Park or Soldier Field, and you'd see five major bands: Nugent, Skinner, Journey, The Outlaws. Five major bands and the ticket prices were like twenty dollars. Yeah. And the same thing. You saw five major acts. Right. For 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 that, you're right. You could go to concerts every week and not even blink an eye because they're so affordable. Used to play in Elmhurst twice a month for ten bucks. You could go see Foghead all through the eighties, like clockwork. You know? They were good. Yeah. 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 I mean, all those bands were good, man. Like, yeah. You know, we didn't know how good we had it. Yeah. <laughs> And, you know, now I mean, if you can get back to those days, you know, yeah, yeah you know, I mean, you know, the equipment's different. Everything's lighter. The he- the lighting equipment, you know, isn't as bulky. It takes up less room, less gas mileage, less room in the truck, this, that and the other. Dot, dot. And but the, still the tickets are jacking up. And, you know, like this one guy, uh, Tank the Tech, the, he does a podcast and he's like a, a tour man, a tour manager. He's also done merch management and stuff like this. And uh a big band had sent him a breakdown of the cost for all the merch, and the, you know what you know. So they're outlaying one hundred twenty-six thousand dollars per show for their merchandise, and at the end of everything, all the payments, the venues making more than them, the labels making more than them. You know, at the end of the day, they're doing all of that for ten percent of that one hundred twenty-six thousand, yeah. and that's what they're paying their crew with. So then there's the guarantee that they're getting for playing. So how bad are the bands getting screwed if they're paying their crew from the merch? Yeah, well, yeah it's brutal. We, we, you know, we don't. It doesn't. We, you know, like when we play, we have to give like I think twenty percent to the venue. You know, okay. well, so the, usually the merch is like twenty percent. So you're making sixty percent as a as a band. You know, it's still. Yeah. You know, back then you, you get all your merch money. They were making they were making yeah. their money off the entry. Yeah. You know? Right. But. What can you do, man? Yeah, three right. deals where they own everything for, you know, in perpetuity. You know? Well, and, and then and then the other thing is that, you know, like back then, I mean, you know, nobody was getting rich off album sales, you know, with the big record companies, but it's even worse now with a streaming deal, right? I mean. I, yeah, you don't get any money, you know. It's, no. You know, it's you, like, know, you, gotta, you gotta be, you just gotta go make money live, you know. I, no. I don't know how that whole thing went down, but it's, it's not helping it's the position. No. no, it's weird no, for sure. Yeah. How big an asset is this? These monsters of the rock cruises. I mean, that's keeping a lot of seventies and eighties bands alive. Is that is that worth it to a band to do one of those? Um, you know, you'll make. I mean, the bands like at our level, you can make you know, eight, nine, ten grand. You know, but you yeah. still got to pay for airfare, and 
you need to, you got to get shows before and after so you can um, try to make a little bit more money. You know, yeah. it's it's yeah. just different for the lower level guys. You know, we're struggling to you yeah. know bring three to five hundred people to a show. You know, to where mm -hmm. Iron Maiden and those guys are bringing you know like twenty to fifty thousand people. You know, right? Yeah. So it's a whole different market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's even interesting too. You know, you have like uh, Priest just came through here not too long ago, and they're playing they're playing theaters. That's yeah. Priest. Yeah, isn't that weird? I yeah. mean, Iron Maiden is so much huger than Judas. Right. It, yeah. Yeah. And I think Judas Priest is the be best, you know, one of the best rock bands of all time. Not a metal band, <laughs> the best rock band. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, I think they wrote, um, I mean, Iron Maiden is killer. Uh, I like their first three or four records. Yeah. But Judas wrote so many good songs. Oh, man. I mean, over yeah. and over and over, you know, I'm just like, oh. yeah. Yeah, because it's kind of tricky, you know. What's going yeah, we on do it. We do a thing where they where we go through album by album, track by track, by artist. So Judas Priest was, uh, you know, we went through, and you know, like uh, we did White Snake, we've done Kiss, we've done Van Halen, you know, Dave and Sam years, we've done, you know, <clears throat> and there's only two singers who never gave me listening fatigue, and that's Ronnie James Dio, and Rob Halford. All the other mm -hmm. singers, by the time I'm on the fourth album, I want to, you know, go lay down. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, look at those guys. They're just killer. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think Rob's probably one of the most talented guys that I ever heard sing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's just, yeah, absolutely. and he can still do it, you know, that's just, which is phenomenal, you know, that he can do that. Yeah. I, I was just, you know, okay, think about this. Okay. What do you think, in your opinion, was the first uh, heavy metal song that you just knew was heavy metal? Helter Skelter by the Beatles. That's a good one. But, or, but you, you felt like you Helter Skelter? You mean in you, attitude or in like, you know, with guitars? Because the song itself, you listen to it and you go, oh man, that's that's a battle. Oh, sing, sing, sing. Glenn Miller band version. Oh, I, see, to me, it was, heavy metal in that. It yeah. was Dissident Aggressor by Judas. Oh, <laughs> oh okay, okay. Yeah. Then he comes in with that high voice. It's just, it's just yeah. so heavy metal, you know? Absolutely. That was like early 70s. Yeah. 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 For, me, for me, it was Sabbath. Sabbath is what got me into metal, the very first Black Sabbath album. And that mm -hmm. was just, yeah. You know, that, especially that, that the first metal, Sabbath album. That's true. They are heavy metal, but, um, there's just something about that disagreement, you know, just an aggressor with a, with um, who was playing drums on the, on on Sin After Sin? Um, uh, was was it Dave? Was it was before Dave? Allen, no, Dave Allen? No, no, no there was Allen? somebody else yeah. before Dave. It was um, he was only there for the fir first two albums, wasn't he? Yeah, it, it was. Uh, it was before Les Pinks. It was uh, uh, he was with Toto, Simon Phillips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Simon Phillips played on yeah. Dissident, uh, played on That's right. Sin. Yeah. And um, he was just a filler guy. And um, and he didn't want to be in that band. He wanted to be in some other band. And they just got him right. to play. But he just played it so good. You know, all the mm -hmm. stuff he played, you know, Sinner yeah. and all that stuff. I mean, that was just gnarly to me, you know, especially yeah. as a kid. Yeah. Was uh, was Priest one of the first, first bands that really, like, uh, got you going? Yeah, it, it was... Um, well, I was always like a Led Zeppelin guy, Deep Purple mm. uh, guy, you know, when, when I was in the 70s, you know. And then, and then, it, like, towards the end of the 70s, I, I heard the live record from Judas. Yeah. It just, it just, it just, to me, it was, I mean, I'd already heard of, you know, Black Sabbath and all that stuff, but there was, there was just something different and something way more progressive about those guys, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. You know? And, yeah. um, and it's like every song was killer. And then I started looking back at um, at their other records, you know, Sin, Rock and Rolla, and um, and Stain Class, and I just go, mm -hmm. God, there was just so many killer songs. Yeah, yeah, Rob Halford wishes that he could have every copy of Rock and Rolla burned. Yeah, they they hated the production a lot. He hates really that album, yeah. Rob yeah. Halford. Yeah, and, but, and that's the thing. That's the thing when you're uh, like when you're a mus musician. Yeah, is uh, you, you want a certain sound, you know, and. Right. You know, even like for me with like uh, the first two Island records, I hate them because they sound like crap. But at the end of the day, you know, normal people like me, when I'm talking about yeah. rock and roll, it's killer. 
Right. Yeah. You know, sure, you can always get better projection, but the, what right. you guys wrote, how you performed it was just freaking cool. It can right. always sound better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Even, right. even, a, sort of even, a, about, even a bad, even a bad Judas Priest song is a phenomenal fucking song for anyone else. Mm, but yeah. for, I mean, because Priest is on a certain, you know, and if it's even down, it's like, oh, that doesn't live up, but it's still great. Yeah. yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah. When Diamonds and Rust comes on, oh. I don't like that song really, but I can't oh. turn it off because it's the Priest. I love it. Yeah. See, yeah. and that's not one of my faves, but I, I have never heard a bad Priest album. It's, that's one of the bands, as soon as they're releasing something, you buy it. Yeah. What I hear the original, you know, it's going to be good. I mean, not knocking Joni Mitchell because I mean, like she's, you know, but I mean, you know, uh, again, you know, Priest taking that tune and, and and rocking it up. I mean, like who doesn't love that? You know, I still love that when when oh, bands yeah. will take a song that's sort of out of genre and do it well, but make it heavier. I mean, yeah, they, own it. Let's it. they were yeah. one of the like, really like Iron Maiden did that Jethro Tull song. Who who was that? Iron Maiden did the Mother oh, Mary uh, song, the, the Jethro Tull song. Oh, yeah. yeah. Don't remember it? It's yeah, I've never I, been a big Maiden fan myself. I love oh. Maiden, but I'm trying to think of which tune. I, um, it would make sense, though, kind of, you know, sensibility. Cross, it was Mother Mary? Mary, I thought. It was, it was, Cross-Eyed uh, Mary? Or? Yeah, Cross-Eyed Mary, I think it, but I yeah. think it was, uh, yeah, yeah. it was, yeah, it was uh, the guy that plays the flute. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought they did a real yeah, great yeah. job. I like the first three records from Iron Maiden, you know, because it's kind of punky and it's kind of heavy metal. Right. No, I like the the Beast too, because I thought Bruce was a killer singer. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, he's a great singer. Understood. And then after that, they just kind of, you know, I like the Trooper, but it just now the records started to just not. It just felt like a production to me, you know. Yeah. Right. But um, yeah, and then when I saw Iron Maiden play and and I saw Bruce, you know, singing Rothschild and stuff, it was just different than happened. Yeah, um, Paul, Paul, Paul definitely you know, had a whole different vibe for sure. Whole different vibe. Yeah. yeah. Even though I think Bruce is a much better singer, you know. Oh yeah. And there's oh. just something about the original, you know. Yeah. That's absolutely. what's kind of tricky about you know redoing level of songs, you know, especially Thunder is that yeah, know, Mike is the original, you know. Yep. So you're gonna need a little bit of slack on somebody else trying to you know sing it, you know. Right. Yeah, because you guys just released Thunder, which is obviously off Street Ready. Yeah. What was the uh, what was the thought process behind remaking Thunder? Well, you know, I'm I, I'm funding the deal, so I get to go in the studio and do stuff. So so I went in the studio and I I, I wanted to um, I was never too thrilled about the production of of the records. Yeah. You know, it just kind of sounded reverby to me and just kind of you know like pansy a little bit you know a little bit, but but that was the th- that sign of time. So I just. I just went in and I redid like uh, Spider. I did Gypsies. I did Spirits in the Wind. I did Black Knight. I did uh, Thunder. I did uh, Rise or Fall. I did the song called Tools of Discipline. And uh, what else did I do? Spirits in the Wind. Did I say that one? I think so. No. Uh, no. Yeah. So I just redid a bunch of them because I wanted to see how I did it, you know. And so Thunder was one of those, but I never really planned on um, releasing it, you know, because it's kind of it's kind of t- tough business trying to compete with classic stuff, you know what I'm saying? Right. And I just wasn't so thrilled about um, having to hear from people that, you know, the old stuff's better, you know. But I still I, I was just, see what I could do with it, with the, with it, you know. Right. I was just going to mention that, Dean. I saw on the Facebook page for Love Thunder Leather Wolf. All the trolls out there. That sucks. I like Michael better. I don't get the trolls. You know, why, why do they got to go that route? Some turn out great. Hands, man. It's like everybody, you know. It took yeah. me. It's they just like the classic lineup. You know, it's like going yeah. to see Judas without Rob. It's just a different deal. Yeah. You know? So that's cool. I mean, you know, they they they're stuck in that world with with mm-hmm. the original songs, which is every fine. every every band I see now. I'm lucky if there's two original members. That's just the nature of the beast now. Yeah. If you don't to like me, it, then don't go see him. It just it it's has how to do you play. Can you play? Right. These I bands mean, don't stay together play, forever. Can you show up in front of a crowd and deliver the songs. Either you can or you can't, you know. And if right. I couldn't, then I wouldn't be doing it, you know. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. I went to see Foreigner a few years ago, and there's only one original member left, Mick Jones. And he was I sick that gone. day. Yeah, he was sick that day, so he didn't yeah. play. So basically, we paid 100 bucks for a Foreigner cover band. 
they were good. Kelly, I think Kelly Hansen on vocals, he's great. Yeah. But it was a foreigner cover band. Yeah, and Pilsen's on bass. Yeah. Well, everyone's got an opinion, man, and and yeah. it's a true, it's true, and it's it's no it's no harm, no foul, you know. People yeah. like what they like, which is fine. Yeah. Right. yeah. I just had an opportunity to play with Rob Math, Keith Adamiak, and Barry Sparks, and 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 so I was just trying to do as much as I could with that lineup because they are all just really good. You right. Know? Yeah. Freaking killer, killer bass player, killer guitar players. You know, so I was like. Huh? How would thunder thunder sound with this dude singing it? You know? Yeah. And and why not? You know? I mean, why yeah. not try it? You know? Yeah. And it sounds great. Think so? Absolutely. Oh, cool, man. Right yeah. on. Well, yeah. I'll send you a couple of the other ones too, dude. Because uh, it's thunder. It's a simple song, but the, I got you know like Rise or Fall or Gypsies right. and Thieves. I got Joel Holster. Joel Holster played a lead on Gypsies and Thieves. He's awesome. I turned oh, really? the slow part in the middle into just like a musical thing, a guitar thing, and he just nailed yeah. it, dude. Uh, yeah, he's he's, he's incredible. From here. Yeah, yeah. He did that lead in Thunder. The first one you hear is Joel. Oh, really? Yeah, that's him playing the lead. That's oh, okay. Awesome. He's a cool guy, you know. He's plus he's a he's a nice nice dude. Yeah, he really is, and he loves. I mean, he loves loves music. I mean, he's like he'll do it. You know, he's into everything. You know? I got another song that I haven't released yet, and it's um, George Lynch played on it. Oh. That's it's my a song guy called right the there. Beast. <laughs> That's my guy. Right on. Yeah, so we got this yeah. this this musical. It's kind of a, like a a copy of Black Knight, you know. It's just okay. a, it's a musical piece. That's it's just a, it's cool. The, the riff is cool, and, and George just played leads in it, you know. Awesome. I'd it's, love to hear that one for sure. A, yeah. So 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 on that song, you'll have George Lynch, Joel Holstra, and Robbie Math. You know, as a three yeah. guys playing the harmonies and playing all the parts. Nice. That's killer, dude. That's killer. Awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. You know, and it's amazing. You know, Lynch's output blows me away. Oh, yeah. I mean, the it's amount of brilliant. albums that he records every year. Yeah. You know, there's well, What I like guys. about him yeah. is um, he's got his, you can tell it's him. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. You know, yeah, yep. he's got signature. signature. It's got a vibe about how he plays, you know, which. Yeah. Uh, it's good. You don't find many guys that got that, you know, to where, well, who's actually playing that lead? You know, like, like Eddie, right. Eddie's got the same thing, you know? Yep. Yep. Just yep. like Al Miola, Paco Delucia. You can tell it's them, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, uh, before we started the show, Dean had, uh, surprised us with the, uh, a trick question for the, uh, what was it, Dean? It was the uh, name, the, best. the three best guitar players on the planet ever to perform live. It's a weird I know, thing. I know, I know. <laughs> it's a weird thing. It's a trick question. We went back and forth, but Jason won. With his he did. Musical knowledge. He and did. Jason, who were those three guitar players? It was Al Di Miola, Paco De Lucia, and uh, John McLaughlin. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Now, Honestly. being a metalhead, <laughs> I don't know much. I know Al Di La Mole is, or uh, whatever. Were they together? They obviously on stage. Uh, educate me on that. Well, just go watch it on YouTube. Uh, it's yeah. interesting that, I mean, they're all individually very successful and really, really talented classical and jazz players, you know? Mm -hmm. It just interests me. It's like, okay, who came up with the idea for all three of them to come play? To get together. Yeah, like, you know, how did that happen? They probably yeah. were Yeah, 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 because I, I think that might, have been a, that might have been a little push of uh why jeff started it with us you know with leatherwolf you know why he just yeah. started doing the three thing you know I, I wouldn't doubt if it had something to do with that you know right yeah so they did a concert together then you uh, just go look at it online they did they, they, they played together for years all yeah. around the world yeah. okay i'll mm -hmm. check it out I'll it's, check kind, it it's out. classical it's it's more it's not heavy metal it's it's yeah yeah Fusion e um, flamenco, it's yeah, like, yeah. You'll, you'll see, you know. And it's kind of cool to see guys with three different styles, yeah, you know, like kind of playing and competing with each other, you know. Yeah, right. and, and, and knowing the promoters, they probably opened for the Backstreet Boys or something like that, right? <laughs> no, they Long would do their own thing, that. dude. Oh, they would yeah. like, uh, <laughs> it's it was their own thing. No you one else like was the, playing with them. You know, like the three tenors. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it was like yeah. on that level. Yeah. I mean, it was right. you know, it was yep. it was G three of another era. Yeah, 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 yeah. Since you're going to bring up something like that, uh, speaking of the craziest opening acts ever, it has to be Jimi Hendrix opening for the Monkees. You guys remember that? They were on the same label. Uh, Jason, the record, 
None, none of you guys might have been born at that. Jimi Hendrix opening for the Monkees. Think about that. How crazy yeah. that is. Well, they well just, someone just released a cleaned up version of uh, a show that uh, it's Paul Butterfield mm -hmm. with B.B. King and Jimi Hendrix. Oh, wow. That, that could is, be cool. It's an hour yeah. and nine minutes long. Nice. And everyone's out of tune, but for what it is, it's a great listen. You know, it's a great listen, you know? Yeah. I didn't even know that show happened. It's history. So to find <laughs> stuff like that, you know, and there was so many, you know, how many jams did you know of, Dean, in the back in the day that happened that if only someone would have heard that? Um, you know what I mean? I didn't go to many concerts, you know, but but like I was in like I was in Spain and I was walking down the street and there was this guy playing acoustic guitar and he was he was as good as Aldi Miola, you know, and I was mm. and he was just playing. Mm. And I was just like, What are you doing here? And he gave me a CD I bought for him. And I just thought, you know, I wonder how many other unknown legends are out there, you know. Oh, well, they're they're everywhere, right? You yeah. know, I mean yeah, it's that it takes time, time to get that good, you know. The best I, mean, guys, yeah. I mean, some of the guitar players like will play for nine hours before they do, they'll do their leads, you know. And I'm just like, Jesus, that's <laughs> how long it takes me to get to this point, you know. But I lose yeah. it in two hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, just to jump back a little bit, um, you know, when you guys started in the early days, I mean, that scene that you were in down there, I mean, obviously you, you were witness to a lot of huge bands in their infancy as well, right? Um, I think you guys played with, you know, Metallica, you know, all those guys, you know, Slayer. You know, it's, it's so yeah. funny, dude, because you don't think about it that way. You know, we're yeah. playing a party with some other local band, you know, right. Slayer, Metallica, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. playing a little nightclub with Poison, you know, right. And you're just going, you're just going, um, well, they're not like us. They're much more simpler. And, and, and uh, you just, you just never freaking know, dude. Right. Or even with Testament, you know, playing with Testament, you know, yeah, and and these guys all of a sudden just go go off, you know, yep, weird stuff. Yeah. You know, like the Chicago scene, you know, it's like who wound up getting, you know, what's his name? Enough's enough got signed, and everyone was like, "What? What? Like, <laughs> oh, not knocking them, but there are yeah. so many bands that were just stellar, mm -hmm. nothing. You know what I mean? And then." Smashing Pumpkins came on the scene, you know, yeah. and we were like, what? Like, everyone used to make fun of those guys. Like, you know what I mean? It was, it's yeah. kind of weird, you know, looking back on shit like that, you know? It's like it's an old, music, man. you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's all good. You yeah, stole the 12-pack. The, yeah, that, they're fucking Slayer now, you know, like. like yeah. <laughs> yeah, we used to play this place called the Woodstock with, with Slayer, and uh, they were nice guys, but I just, I just didn't understand what they were doing. You know? Yeah, cause, well, yeah, the whole thrash thing, it, you know, early on was, it was out there. I mean, they, you know, they started their own thing, right? I mean, it's... Yeah. Uh, and they're big yeah, in Europe. Dude. We play with them a few times, you know, at yeah. Headbangers and some places out there. And then, you know, that, that drummer is just really good, and the guys are good. Yeah. You know? But it's just, it's, some of that singing and some of that stuff is just beyond my comprehension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've said that all the time. Being a metalhead, I'm afraid they're going to take away my metalhead membership card because I don't like Slayer, and that's like, I think I should, but I. I never, I, I never was like a fan. I just can't I just get into it. Respected them, you know that. I mean, they could yeah. play, you know. Yeah, yeah I like their yeah. style. Yeah, but either way, yeah. they they could play. Yeah, like when I was in band practice and the guys going to, you know, Slayer. Uh, okay, I'm going to go have a cigarette. I'll be back in five minutes. We'll play your song. <laughs> Guy just didn't get it. You know, no. and that's yeah. okay. You don't have to. What get about it. Creator? You like Creator? Oh yeah, I liked Creator. Yeah. Now I'm you know, more of a Slayer fan than what about, that band, what about that band Death? Yeah, Chuck. They, well, that was a uh, Florida band, right? You know. Um, I don't know. Uh, Napalm Death? No, just Death. It was a uh, Chuck Shoulder. Yeah. He, you know, he oh. passed away kind of young. Um, yeah, yeah, just recently they just played in in, in San Diego or uh, uh, San Francisco. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, they were you know when kind was, of like pioneer band, I think, right of that genre. Um, yeah. When I when I, I was in high popular. school, when I was in high school, I had a graphic arts class, and one of my projects was I created my band and I made album covers and everything. And my band was called Death. Oh. And I made album covers and I had my friends in there and I put the songs on there. The first album was called Buried Alive, and then what twenty years later, 
Jeff <laughs> actually made it big, and I was like, damn it, missed my you, calling. The best song title ever is Killed by Death. That's Killed by oh, Death. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of redundant. You know that? Have you, did, you ever meet, did you ever meet Lemmy? Yeah, at the Rainbow when I lived in L.A. Yeah, yeah I, when we were in Europe playing, um, we had a week off in London, and we went and watched him play a show. And then, and then after that, we, me and Paul went over to his house, and um, he's like such a he. He was just a mellow dude, and he's into old Beatles. Yeah. Oh yeah. All these tapes of old Beatles stuff, and I'm just going, <laughs> oh, what a trip, you know? Oh just yeah, like, and he was he was really in the '50s rock and roll too. I think. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He, he, he was a nice guy. Really? Yeah. He yeah. wasn't at all, but like you know, like what I thought he was going to be, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I was telling Jason the other day about seeing Lemmy at the Rainbow. It's four in the afternoon on a Tuesday or something. I had a day off, strolled in, you know. And there's Lemmy. And then I turn around, and there's John Entwistle leaning up against the door. I'm like, get the... I was more impressed that Entwistle was there than than Lemmy, you know what I mean? I knew Lemmy would be there because he's like a chair, you know. He's always yeah. going to be if he's not at a show, but, you know. Yeah, he's another... Yeah. John Entwistle is another killer musician. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and he was the anchor for The Who. He was the oh. only sane one there. Really? <laughs> you know, so everyone else, was, I mean, think about it. Keith Moon's out oh. of his mind. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, Townsend was doing his own thing, being a guitar god and, you know, writing all the stuff. And then Daltrey was, you know, a great front man. I mean, so, yeah, if it wasn't for Entwistle, man, you know, I don't think we'd have The Who the way that we had him. So yeah, Dean, it'd be, it'd be nice to go see those. Those what really went down? Like how, how, how important was um, you know, the guy from, from Led Zeppelin, the bass player. What's his name? Oh, oh John, Paul John, John Paul Jones. John Paul Jones. I have a feeling he was probably like probably one of the most musically talented guys in that band. You know, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Big session player too. He did a lot yeah. of you know. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, because yeah. that's where he first met Jim. But then. You know, when uh, Jimmy was having a bunch of issue with, you know, substances, John Paul and Robert went in. And they basically re recorded half of what was it, Coda? They did that way. I think it was mm -hmm. Coda. Yeah. And then he came in and did, that's why it's so like keyboard heavy. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah, it's another band, Led Zeppelin. I just, how many killer songs did they write? Oh, right. I mean, I like The Who, um, but I don't, I, there's only like three or four songs I just think are phenomenal, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Just the like same Deep Purple. Me. I mean, they, they wrote a ton of killer songs. Right. Love Purple. Yeah, yeah. Black Knight by Deep Purple is actually one of my favorite tunes. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I just love that tune. You know, it does something, you know? Yeah. You know, it's just fun, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, so, you know, Deep Purple, you know, it would have been really interesting you know, because we know that uh, uh, Bruce Dickinson's very close with Ian and kind of Ian kind of took him under his wing when he was young and then Samson and all that. So it would have been interesting had uh, Bruce went over and sang for Deep Purple instead of Maiden. Mm. You know what I mean, imagine what that would have been. It's an interesting theory, huh? Yeah. yeah. And then maybe that screwed up Blackmore and then they didn't have Rainbow and Dio would have went to. Uh, Iron Maiden. Imagine that. <laughs> Maybe that's pretty trippy, huh? That's yeah. a nice stuff to think about. Yeah, it's just, you know, I mean, but that's how easy it happens. I mean, that's how it happens, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. someone makes a decision. Next thing you know, three bands have different members. And had it not been for that moment, you wouldn't have, you know. Yeah, I think, um, I just think no matter where Dio went, he, it would have been killer. Oh, I think I think oh, he, yeah. he 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 just had a vibe about the songs he wrote, you know. Right, it was awesome. I, I don't know so much about Bruce and and so much about um, what was the band he was in? Um, it was Samson. Samson. Yeah. I mean, who else was in that band? I don't know. I just know Bruce was in it because right. you know, no. yeah, because Bruce can sing and he can sing every night. And he can hold the note, you know. That's that's yeah. way cool for Iron Maiden, you know. Right, and he can fly, so it's it's a savings on the bottom line. Yeah, wind that jet. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. You know, doing a whole show, working all day, then jumping on a jet and flying it for four hours. I don't. Nah. I don't know if you get some fatigue. Yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, uh, I wouldn't be up for it. That's for uh, sure. I'm like, yeah, it's in the budget. So, okay. Dean, 
Who's the uh, who, who's the drummer that got you started that made you want to drum? John Bonham. Bonham, yeah, had to be. Yeah, <laughs> I like a heavy yeah. foot. Yeah, he just there was just something about you know, and that, that's kind of just like heavy blues at the end of the day, you know, with a melody. Right. right. Nothing, and it's a style of how he played. You know, he did he didn't do a lot of extremely hard things. He just did everything super cool. Yeah. Right. Yeah, a little bit behind, you know, and just just big. It just he had a vibe, you know. I don't yeah. think he was sitting there saying, "I'm going to play a little bit behind." I just think he just, nah. you know, you feel what you're playing, and you yeah. just follow that. You know, you just get a vibe for how you play. Right. And you know, you know, speaking of great drummers, I think one of the most underrated drummers of all time is Alex Van Halen, just because he's. Well, I think um, I totally agree. You know, like um, towards towards the end, like you know, right now, you know that that that. That the way he played played it, he just got he got so much better. Yeah. And you got to remember, I mean, when you're when you're playing behind Eddie Van Halen, you know, right. just for the legacy he did, it's going to be hard to get up to that point, you know. Right. Especially those right. songs. Those songs aren't going to be, you know, progressive, where you right. can show stuff off, you know. Right. Right. Like he is super good. I mean, he's like one of my heroes too, you know. But yeah. Later on is when I started respecting him a lot more, you know. Yeah. yeah, you know, and I talked about this before, but you know, like people are like, oh, what made Van Halen, you know, stick out? What was it? What was it? You know, well, at the time, everyone was, you know, the next generation from blues being sent via England and then back, and then they're copying those guys. But Van Halen, they came up. That was they came up with jazz. You know, they were playing in, you know, the Van Halen brothers are playing in jazz trio. Dave was in the, you know, all types of jazz. Well, the Van Halen family are all classic musicians. Right. Mm. Eddie, Eddie, from what I understand. Started playing piano. He was a piano guy. Yeah. You know, and then, and then he started doing the drums and the guitar was last in line, but his, his family were like pianists and, you know, mm. really, really good classical players, you know? Yeah. Right. But as kids, they came up playing jazz with their dad. Yeah, 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 no doubt. So, I like, learned. yeah, yeah okay. it's too funny because um, I, I watched an Eddie interview and he goes, You know what? I can't read music. Yeah. You know, and uh, it's because I don't I don't think about it like that way. I just feel it, you know? Right. And yeah. so the, his teacher's trying to teach him stuff and he, he's, he's like, Well, I, I can't read that. I can play it though. Yeah. Right. They're like, Did you listen and play that back or did you read it, Eddie? Yeah. <laughs> and, and he did because he had such a great ear. He was just, Oh, you know, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I I I had to learn how to read music because I I played in the jazz band and the orchestra and the marching band in high school. So I had to learn. I didn't get it wired like you know a, a cool sight reader that can just blow right through it. But I, I had to, I figured it out, you know. Mm -hmm. Right on, right on. Okay, so when did uh, okay so Brother Wolf broke up? Well, you guys split up in '92. No, we broke up in '89. Man. Wikipedia's got to get their shit together. <laughs> Whatever, dude. Uh, but, Hail Mary, Hail Mary, did their deal, and then they did some recordings, and I think that they broke up in '92. You know. Okay. Mm. Right on. I don't know. I don't follow that stuff. So, uh, okay. So, tell us the story of how how you decided to come back. <laughs> you know what? We're gonna do this again. And... Well, it wasn't it wasn't me. I got a call from Kerry in like 1999 to go play a party up at the Troubadour for Jennifer Perry. And okay. Ozzy and his wife, and just a bunch of people are going to come celebrate Jennifer Perry's little thing. So we did it. And then we played like four or five songs. And then um, um, basically, um, we just decided to play a couple shows. And we played a couple shows, and it went really well. And then we went to Europe and played Whack In, and we just did a couple international gigs. And then, then we came back, and, and um, we just decided – okay me and jeff wanted to write a record but no one else did mm. so jeff and i just finished the world of silent without those guys and we found someone else to play bass and someone else to sing wade and um just went from there i played a few shows and then that fell apart with the singer not wanting to sing for us anymore mm. so how was it playing whacking i mean that's the mother of all metal fests right it was fun, dude. It was, uh, you know, we hadn't played in forever, and then we go over there and get to play a big festival like that. It was pretty cool. Yeah. But it wasn't nearly as big as it is now, you know, back then. Yeah. This was like 99 or 2000, somewhere around, around there. Yeah. But it was super cool. We got to meet a lot of people. Yeah. And um, that's when we we, we, we we found out that we still had tons of fans. You know, we played our show, 
and then you, you only got like a half hour to sign autographs. Well, we had like an hour and a half worth of people there, you know? Oh, wow. Right on. Awesome. And so it was like, you know, people still like us, you know? Yeah. So speaking of Wacken, uh, as of this Wacken Festival that's going on, I believe it just started, Lemmy's ashes are forever interned at Wacken. Really? That's yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's where his ashes were sent. They just had an article on it yesterday. I'm like, yeah, they did a little, one of his bases there. They've got some some clothing, and uh, they did a little parade. And then he's yeah. They they had a little urn made with his uh, his famous hat with the yeah. You know, now the people are gonna go to whack and like they go to Israel. They're gonna you know they're gonna go have their pilgrimage. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I haven't played whack in it forever, you know. I just amazing. I just I watched an article or uh, a documentary of about whack and that came out uh over the winter it just blew me away you know it got and, huge dude yeah it's just huge. monster i mean the even the mayor's into it and like the town loves it and you know right on and i and i wish american audience weren't so fickle with their music it's america man yeah. it's just america because you would think <laughs> by listening to the radio or watching certain things that there's no metal heads and there's a Fuck ton of us. There's a fuck ton of us. You know what I'm I mean? I'm sure there is, but it's just like back in the '80s. You know, we don't get we don't get much love. You know, they right, right, stick right. us on at midnight and MTV for an hour. You know, right? Oh, man. Exactly. Get real. You know? Yeah. Now, and what do we got starting here today in Chicago? Lollapalooza. Yeah. 140 bands, and I looked at the list. I know maybe three of them. Three of them. Well, Chicago is a great rock and roll crowd, man. You know. Yeah, but I don't know how many of these bands are considered. It's all about getting roll. older too, dude. You know, when, when we were younger, everyone was still younger and in their prime, you know, and then after 30, 40 yeah. years, they just get petered out. <laughs> right. You know, it's it's you don't want to do hundred thousand you know, people. I gotta go play for an hour and a half. Can I play yeah, it like, all? like ten years yeah. ago? Hey, hey V, you wanna go you wanna go to Lollapalooza? Mm, no. Now today, hey V, you wanna go to Lollapalooza? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too yeah. many people it's too hot you know? gotta wake you up to ask you that though that's the question yeah, yeah. It's, you know it's you know I, you know from all the years of watching shows from the side i don't like being in the audience anymore anyway but i don't like crowds that big personally but no. if they're cheering for me i would but you know <laughs> i just like to go that. watch guys that can play you know yeah yeah i mean i went and saw al dean play with Chuck Korea and mm. they, they, at this little uh, um, high school college place, and there was only like twenty five people there, right? And they were just killer. Yeah, you just look at it, you go, God, these guys are just so goddamn good. I know. <laughs> and, and what's sad is they're leaving us too. Like Chick just passed away, I think a year or two ago, didn't he? Yeah. Or, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. It's just man, but at least I got to see it. You know, it's I just yeah. it's just nice. Like just the first time I saw Michael Shank there, you know. Oh. I think Graham Bonnet was singing and Cozy Powell was playing drums. It was a little yeah. dive bar. What a great lineup. Oh, in, absolutely. In Costa Mesa or uh, in San, uh, Newport Beach. And uh, it's like 300 people, but they were just killer. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, Gra Graham's still doing it too, isn't he? Isn't he? Uh... Yeah. yeah. I, I, I hear, you know, one of my friends, Joey Tafoya, was making a record with him. And um, he's just not the same as he used to be, you know? Really? Right. Yeah, I haven't heard anything recently, but well, he just put out a record. Yeah, yeah, I heard he did. I haven't listened to it. I should check it out. Yeah, they had a good producer. The guy that was recording it and playing guitar was was really really good. You know, yeah. and I listened. I went in the studio with like me and Roy Z went over there for a little bit because uh, um, and I and I heard the track and I it was it was pretty good. You know, it was definitely not bad. You know, yeah. it was right. aggressive and sounded good. Yeah. And Michael's still doing it too. I love Michael Shanker, man. What a yeah, I was talking legend. to Barry the other day. He just finished doing the bass for that record, and uh, they're trying to get Bruce to sing uh, sing one of the songs. I was oh, I was wow. hoping it would be uh, Rock Bottom, you know. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. He's nice. Okay, so now getting in. Okay, so you now so you 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 recorded the first album, then you came back. And then you reformed again after '99. You played a few shows. You did whack in. Then you put out an album a few years ago, correct? 
Well, and then we played, and then we tried to make a record with the original guys, but no one showed up, me and Jeff, Jeff and I. And then we ran into problems. Jeff's gone. Me and Mike, Carrie played for a little while. Then Carrie was gone. And then me and Mike played for a while, and then he's gone. And, like uh, any other bands, there's always, you know, ego clashes or musical difference, creative differences, whatever, you know. Well, just imagine if you um, you married a serial killer. <laughs> and, and you didn't realize it until 10 years later, 80, 80 deaths. Right. <laughs> 80 deaths. <laughs> God damn it. How, how did I not see that? The body oh, is backing up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got something like that for you. So my dad was a magician and a clown, right? And he had a Vegas contract the whole nine. Da 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 da. He was really, really well known. But you know, so you'd have other clowns come over. You know, other whatever. And dad was in construction as well. So was this guy. Well, it turns out that motherfucker was John Wayne Gacy. Oh. Ooh. Was in our house like five times, shooting the shit, having <laughs> beers with Dad. Oh, <laughs> how you doing, boys? Weird, huh? You know, weird. weird. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I'm one of five siblings, and so I can understand like having, you know, how was it? Oh, I want to play the lead. No, I want to play rhythm on this. So oh, you two should play rhythm. Was there ever a lot of that going on? It wasn't my department, dude. Well, I okay. Just did my thing. <laughs> Those guys worked out their stuff. I. I didn't get involved in that stuff. It's truly not my business. And well, no, that's that says a lot of on how your band operated. You know what I mean? Uh, they, they they seem to get all, they seem to get along well with what they did. Right. Yeah. You know, because in the bands that I was in, you know, one of the experts is always one of the fucking guys' girlfriends. You know? Oh, I don't like. You know what? Go outside. You know, we actually banned. Hey, trust me, man. It's 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 it's, <laughs> it's 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 a joke, but you know it exists. Right. Yeah, yeah, you gotta you gotta listen to someone's girlfriend be, because he doesn't have the balls to say you're a dumbass. You shit. <laughs> so I gotta sit here and listen to this story that you really know nothing about and try to be kind, you know? Yeah, and that's why we made the 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 law no girlfriends or wives of practices. But you yeah. can come, just shut up. Right. Like, talk about what you know. Like, you know and, and that's fine. You, you know this, but you don't know you don't know what we do, you know how we do it, you know? Right. And it's <laughs> and then, Sometimes there's just too many opinions, man. Right. right. Oh, so yeah, well, that was the thing about this. Uh, um, you know, like if, if the original guys made this record, I don't think it would have been as good as it was. Because you know, there would be no Barry. Yeah. There would be no, you know. Take your phone off the desk, Fred. Uh, How would you know that was mine? <laughs> I guess I looking before, at it. Fred. It's not our first rodeo. Yeah. I know. <laughs> All right. Well, at least it was a phone. Yeah, so yeah. these phones are, um, I mean, you, 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 have you guys all heard the record? I've heard I've heard yeah. a couple of the songs, and I was listening to the older stuff the other day. And I ran late today, and I didn't have time, so, you know, I, I apologize. But, you know, I remember Leather Wolf with fondness. You know. Did you listen to the record, Fred? I think you did, huh? Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. What about you, you, Jason? Uh, you sent yeah. an autograph copy. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, so what, it's, do you it's, it's, what do you what do you, you, I mean, you listen to it? I, I love the production, too. I mean, so you recorded that yourself? I'm the man, dude. dude. Yeah. yeah, I did listen to Kill the Hunted like three times, if that... Yeah, I, you, 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 take him out of the room. Dude. He, he, he's giving us no love. Man. He just didn't, he didn't, didn't even do his homework. Oh, I got a music conversation. conversation. Oh, yeah, yeah. Man, dude. No, no, I love the production. The production's fantastic, man. You really well, kill the hunted. Um, that's me playing the guitar. Really? Right on. Yeah. Oh wow. Da, 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 it's simple. I can do simple stuff, you know. Yeah. Nice. I can't come up with the gnarly stuff, but yeah, that was me. I wrote that song in like 2006. Awesome. And I couldn't get any love from the original guys helping me out with it. But Rob and Luke, I mean, Rob and Keith really helped me finish it, you know? Yeah. Now, do you guys cool. still all talk? Are you cordial or just, you know, time passes on? Got other things going uh, on? I, I, I don't really have any desire to talk to those people anymore. You got you, got you. Yeah. Yeah. I realized I married a serial killer. killer so, <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you come to my neighborhood, you're going to die. Don't invite me to the parole. Don't invite me. Don't call me. Don't talk to me. But I wish him well. You know, I mean, 
Yeah. They're good musicians. They did some good stuff, and hopefully, you know, everything's good with those guys. Yeah. Okay, so what are your plans moving forward? What What would you like to see happen? Just play shows. Yeah. I really, now that I know that, that Fred lives in Chicago, I wish I would have called him when I was in Chicago last week and we would have went out to dinner. So that would have been a, yeah. that would have yeah. been something. Yeah. I would have bought, I would have bought you a beer. Yeah. Yeah. And I live uh, about five miles from Fred. So but really, I, yeah. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, uh, August 23rd, Leather Wolf is at the iconic Whiskey A Go Go. Oh, right on. Right. And I will be there so we can have a beer that day. I'm finally going to get to see the whiskey a go go. August whiskey. 3rd. Right? You guys are there, I hope, because I got You're playing tickets. whiskey. First time we played there. Yeah. Uh, it, this will be the first time we played like in over a year. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm uh, looking forward to seeing wrist. you guys live. It'll be oh, fun, dude. How's your wrist doing? Yeah. It's fine. As soon as I'm done here, I got to go to the studio, you know, run through the set for like three hours. So, well, how do you get the injury? Is it from playing or do you fell off a ladder? Landed on my. <laughs> Like it's back. always like this. It's always something I like that. And I landed like this. Oh shit! Now, did you fall off a ladder, or did the serial killer kick the fucking ladder over? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I slipped. I, it was my fault. Yeah. You know, for the fall, it's it's it. You know, I, I lucked out. It was only that the wrist, but a wrist is a hard thing to heal. You know. Yeah. Oh, for sure, yeah. especially as much as you use it. So, how did you get back into it? You know, how long first, did you okay. play? First, they put a bar right here. They bolted in for six months. Okay. And then over that time, one of my tendons broke. So they had to go in when they took oh. the bar out and resew it to that. So I have to wait another two months. And then over that time you start stretching. Once the tendons heal, right. You start getting back to normal. So it just takes a little bit of time, especially when you're old like me. Right. <laughs> like, right. Us. like us. So when that, when that <laughs> happened, were you just like, you know, fuck you universe. Or, or no, it was my mistake. I mean, it was my fault. But I, I was supposed to go to Europe and play like two or three shows, and we we're supposed to do uh, the Rock Timber. So it was like, man, I had to cancel Europe and right. got some one of my friends to come play drums for one of the shows. You know. Mm -hmm. I love the kit too in the uh, the new video, man. That's uh, oh, pretty cool. cool huh? Yeah, yeah. What uh, what are you playing? What uh, Yamaha's? Yamaha's. Yeah, I it's still a cool love that. It's it's, it, it's a nice one. It's Dude, how deep, forever, man. How yeah. deep are those bass drums? They're, they're, I think they're uh, twenty-eight by thirty-two. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, you know it's you know, and all the recording engineers go, "Well, it's just too big." Um, no, no such thing. <laughs> well, you know, you can't have more control over a smaller drum, you know, because I checked yeah. it out. Dude. I've been to the studio a few times, uh, and at yeah. the end of the day, it wasn't that big of a notice, you know. I just like, yeah. you know, if you want it. It's just about how dead you want it, you know, and how, how you get it tuned, you know? Yeah. You know, I'm still, I, I still love the old big 80s kits, though. You know, I know a lot of guys have switched to, you know, single kick and, you know, and they've scaled their kits down. And I get it. And they can, you can still, you know, a good drummer can play great on anything. But visually, I still love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like the White Snake drummer, you know, what's his name? Um, to, uh, Tommy. Uh, Oh, Tommy, Tommy Aldridge. Aldridge, you know, he's yeah. he's like another one of my heroes, you know? He's yeah. a monster. Yeah, yeah, and he's still old and doing it, you know? Yeah, yeah he's like one of those 80s monkeys. Of, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like they were like hitting 16 six. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, he's my hero. I got to play with those guys <laughs> once. And now, you, and now you see all these guys are playing, and it's very to their body. They don't have to reach far anymore. And I get it because they don't want to pull a shoulder, you know? I don't know about that, dude. My that's the thing, you know. I got a practice set at my house, just a trigger drum set, which is way easy to shred on. Then yeah. you got the real drums, and you got to reach all the way around. It's like, oh, right. yeah. You know, but after like about a week or so, you get you get back in the game and you're ready to roll. You know. Right. Yeah, Tommy yeah. Aldridge, man, he's just a, a beast. Yeah, he's a, he's really good. Plus, he played with a bunch of killer other bands. You know. Oh, oh yeah. Everything he did was just. Yeah, he, he was good, man. And, and like yeah, I've heard interviews and like his band members will be talking. He's like, yeah, you know, everyone will warm up. We'll get to the show twenty minutes early. Do a couple of scales, fuck around, blah blah. You know, Aldridge is there playing the entire set before the show. At, <laughs> at, at seventy five years, old, this, man. At seventy five years old, but that's what made him who he is. You know, yeah. right. like you hear him play, you know it's him. You hear yeah, Van Halen, you know it's him. 
Yeah. Just unbelievable. You know, Vinny is another one, you know. Vinny Appice. Yeah, like Vinny and yeah. and and Tommy Aldridge, they that's the sound of heavy metal drums that everyone just fell in love with. Yeah. You know. You know, because yeah. it was the next generation from Bonham and Moon and you know, mm -hmm. you know, they had heavy played drums on the first uh Randy Rhodes record with Ozzy. That was Tommy Aldridge, wasn't it? Or yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, go ahead, Jason. Was uh, or was it Lee Kerslake? What's what? Lee Kerslake. Didn't he do some of the earlier Aussie stuff? Like, I think uh, Lee Kerslake. I think you might Bob be right. Hayes. I think you might be right. Yeah. And like I think Bob it was Hayes Hayes on that record. I'm not sure, you know? Yeah. That means you have to remember something. I, I, I'd have right. to look back, but I, I thought I thought Lee, Lee Kerslake okay. was in there, and then Tommy replaced him, but I might have that backwards. I don't know. Yeah, Lee Lee Kers Lee Kerslake did play, even though Tommy Aldridge is credited. Same with Rudy really? and Bob Daisy. Daisy Bob Daisley, yeah. was the bassist. Yeah. And they re yeah, they replayed their part. So they had a studio guy, and then then the guy just pretty much went on the road. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think Lee Kerslake used to hang out with Bonham, and they were like buddies back in the day. They were close friends. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, John Bonham was just, he was good when he was young. And he was good, yeah. you know. He yeah. got dialed early, you know. Just his mm. whole freaking vibe was killer. Yeah, totally. So now, totally. the way that it works, are you more interested in having a label or having distribution? It seems to be a big, like a lot of people are doing their own thing and then signing for distribution only. I don't want to deal with labels anymore because there's just no money. In it. I'd rather just go right, play right, right, right. shows and, and sell product. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, but yeah. if, if I was if I was that, then, yeah. then you have to have a label. You know, and then they can yeah. really help you out. There's there's just always something about having a label. You know, like Leather Wolf, Nuclear Blast. It just gives you a little more clout in the business. You know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, things are changing. You know, or have changed. It's yeah, totally different than <clears throat> ten years ago. I'd like to see it land somewhere like more in favor of the artists, though. You know, and I don't really know what it is. I don't think anybody does yet. But this whole streaming thing, it, it's not that. I know? don't know. I think music's kind of it's it's kind of sort of on its way out. You know, yeah. it's part of it. I mean, look at all through the '80s, how many killer bands you know came up came into being. You know, right? Yeah. You know, it's so like. There hasn't been as many, you know? Right. So I don't know where these bands are, you know? And I don't even know if there's guys that are talented enough to do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like like uh, Britney Spears isn't going to have a 40th anniversary tour of, you know, uh, Hide the Knuckle or whatever it was that she came up with. You know what I mean? Like, it, that's not going to happen. You know what I mean? There's, I mean, you can't be out there 350 pounds. Ah, ah. Uh, you know, and then so, what, what, what's your guys' favorite heavy metal record? Ooh, mm. That's a tough one. Wow. Mm. Mine is Operation Mind Crime by that's Queens. Right? Right? That's a great one. That just mm. yeah, I, I, like, I like the demo of Queens. Right? They also recorded the best EP ever recorded. The EP? The yeah. first EP? The best EP ever recorded. In my oh, life. it I is. It's it way is. better than the records. Yeah. yeah. That was Myself. amazing. Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, because when I heard that, I, I heard it, then I went up to um, the country club up in Reseda, and I watched the play. I go, oh, these guys are good, man. Yeah. When I heard the record, I was just disappointed. Yeah. I was expecting something else. Not that it was bad. Right, yeah. right, right. You know, the singer could sing. They could play. It sounded like heavy metal when they were young, you know? Yeah, yeah. they had to write songs at the time. Yeah. Just very layered. All their stuff was really, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I still think it's going to be a Judas... It's going to be a Judas record, or it's going to be a Black Sabbath record, and it might even be a Deep Purple record. You know? mm, yeah. I, oh, still yeah. Been, I still haven't really thought about what it, what it is, because I... Machine I Head one -offs, greatest you know? albums of all time, too. I love that album. Which one? Machine Head. Yeah. That's a really a good, good one. one. Yeah. 
you know, I, you know, if you count ACDC as heavy metal or hard rock, you know, that now looking back, it could be just straight up rock and roll. It's still killer. I mean, yeah. they were killer. Back yeah. in black. It's like Rush. Rush is killer. Oh, back in yeah. black. You know, yeah. yeah. Van Halen won another great yeah, album. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that stuff is heavy metal. I, I, I don't know. Wizard of Oz, great album. You know. Yeah. No. It really just surprised me how well Ozzy did, you know. Yeah. And one of the one of the best debut albums. We just uh went over them a few weeks ago and uh uh Wings of Steel. If you haven't heard of them, man, check them out. Young guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're they're, they're around here. Shit. Are they? Yeah, good? We're, we're gonna we're gonna see if we can play some shows with them, you know, because we hear that they're so they're really a really good band. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Leo's amazing, and yeah, absolutely. They're great guys too. Cool. You know, easy to get along with. They know what they're talking about, and it's and it's cool. Like with people, you know, we talk about this frequently. When you're dealing with a musician from Europe, you can hear their, all the education that they have. It's a different type of musical education that American players tend to have. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because their radio, if they're listening to radio like Fred, you know, he's only going to listen to heavy metal. But over there, they're, you know, you listen to one radio station and they play 16 different genres from classical yeah. to opera to. So they have all these smattering of textures within their, you know, writing capabilities. You know, and really, I mean, the best metal bands back in the day, the ones that we all love, came didn't come from here. No. They came from overseas, right. you know. Yeah. And everyone on Friday night was in the import section after they got out <laughs> work in the record store. Hey, man, check this yeah, out. People said that we kind of have that British vibe to us, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you guys were definitely, um, you weren't the average bears in that right. sort of class you were with. I mean, you know, the, the music was definitely more cerebral. You know, guitar was a lot of intricate guitar parts. Drumming, of course, was, you know, um, it, it, it wasn't uh, poison. It definitely uh, wasn't fluff. <laughs> no, no. So, and, and you know, I, I mean... Uh, I think that's probably why there's still a lot of interest in Leather Wolf. You know what I mean? It's definitely the songs, dude. It's it's the music. You know, there's yeah, there's just something about it. Who knows what it really is, but it's just right. It's just you, you want to hear it again. You know? Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Because basically, I, what happened was they were the cool kids in the pool, and then everyone else had summer break. They came in the pool and started peeing in the pool. You know what I mean? That's why I, well, I, I think you guys got screwed from the from the amount of people that came after you that they tried to mimic that just didn't have yeah. it. You know what I mean? You know, you don't know. The grunge thing kicked in, you know, and uh, all that too. Yeah. yeah. Who knows, man? Who knows? I, I think uh, I just think if we would actually stayed friends and just kept pounding out the tunes and just kept yeah. working on our trade and our talent, I yeah. think it finally would have went down. You know? Well, you know, another thing that always struck me too, even on the the older albums, was I mean, vocal harmonies too were like, I mean, you guys were on point, you know, and that and that's a hard thing to do, you know. It's it's um, it's not that hard. It's usually just roots, thirds, fifths, you know. Yeah. And and, and then you know, that wasn't my favorite part of it because it just oh. sounded like too many people. That's why, like oh, on this yeah. record, I just I got the harmonies and stuff going on in there, but it's not overkill, yeah. you know. Right. I got you. Yeah. You know, but yeah, back then there was a lot of those big backup vocals that sounded like Coliseum ish, yeah. you know, which wasn't my yeah. cup of tea, you know? Right. That was like a Kevin Beamish thing. Yeah. But it's it's singing, dude. As long as you hit the note, you're in key, you know? Well, that's true. Yeah. Pretty All right. simple. So let me ask you since <laughs> it's a, you know, big controversy going on right now, what's your opinion of people using tracks while playing live? Well, um, I think this. I think either you're talented enough to go put on a live performance, or you're not. Right. right. Yeah, and there's and there's the only thing that I will quote unquote give if there's a production element, you know, like you know, you're playing Detroit Rock City, 
and you hear that, you know, the van rumble or whatever. Sound, or, sound effects, maybe. Or, or, or like, like Queen's right doing, you know, you know, yeah. the whole that thing. And there's, you know, oh, you know, paging doctor, blah, blah, blah. That I can see. Yeah, that's, 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 that's alarm. But, um, yeah. I mean, we used to use sample stuff like the, off the first record for the backups because, you know, you can't get that live guy singing all right. these different notes sound that big, you know. But right. I just thought it was a joke, you know. Having someone right. backstage playing keyboards, hitting the vocals. And I was like, fuck that shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, just make it a live show. You know, is it really that important? Really, you know? Yeah. Right. Sing the backup. And if you can get five guys hitting the notes and you can, you can, can, everyone can sing in key and yeah. you can do the harmonies, it's cool. Yeah. yeah. Have you, have you any of you guys even listened to um, the World of Silent record? I've heard a couple of tracks, but I haven't listened to the whole record. But it, I noticed it was a lot heavier. Uh, well, that's to me. me and Jeff, and that, that goes back to our first record. Yeah. But, um, so you're gonna like this one, dude. If you go and just just type in King of the Ward, um, oh. uh, we're gonna play that live, which we've never done before. But oh, the, wow. the vocals are super cool, and there's harmonies, and it's all over the place. So it's gonna be a task. Just to pull it off vocally. You know? Oh yeah. Take it. <laughs> yeah, That's one of my cool song. One of my yeah. favorite bands vocally to see is Striper. Mine was always like um like Night Ranger. Oh, they're oh, great yeah. too. I've yeah. seen those guys <laughs> a times. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if Striper uses backups or whatever in there, you know, because there's only four of those guys, you know. So yeah. You know, who knows what's going on? Right. And you know all the guys in Striper can sing, so it's not like yeah. they're you know. You ever play with? That's cool. Because yeah. I I personally can't sing. Yeah. I cannot sing. That's <laughs> well, why I just wrong with that. You can play your ass off on the skins, man. That's all the. I tried it for for a little bit, but it's it takes a lot of dedication, you know, to sing, and then to sing in key with four other guys, you know, right? And to play drums, it's 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 just a task, man. That's oh yeah, are you are you it's just like Castro Noble. You know, I mean, that guy can freaking sing, and he can oh, play. Yeah. yeah, you know, that's just killer. You know that he can do yeah. that shit. What was that band he did? Him and Hoekstra. He was just fronting the band. I think he stopped playing drums at one point, didn't he? Or he was. No, he or maybe just for still, He's still doing the journey gig. Oh, is he? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's a lot of drama going on with Journey at the moment. It's you know, it's you know when when the reality kicks in that you married a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> Something's got to change, dude. That's the fun. I'm gonna be cracking up tomorrow. <laughs> like, well, just good. think about the bummer is that when you finally realize, God, I, I did this thing and it was so bad, and I've been doing it forever. <laughs> hey, are you gonna finish tuning that guitar? <laughs> What did you say before when there's like 80 bodies around? You're like, oh, I should have known. 80 bodies deep. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the tricky thing about life is um at some point you're responsible. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. for the good and the bad. You know the way the way things work out or they don't. You know. Right. You know when, you I, know, when I, I, I when I was writing um, the the words for Kill the Hunted, I was thinking about that. You know. Yeah. And when I was writing the words for Only the Wicked, I was just thinking about my life and what I was playing with and where I was going and what I was doing, and then I just made a decision. You know, that's where that last yeah. verse came in from Kill the Hunted. You know. Yeah. I want satisfaction. I've come to take what is mine. <laughs> Heavy metal is the main attraction. You know? I just, well, that's, it was perfect for the story, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. No, that serial killer is fucking one of the best lines ever. Yeah, and dude, we all do it at the level, one, day, one way or another. Yep. We just participate in some dumbass shit, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and hopefully you don't realize when there's a machete, like, pull. Stuck, you know. The whole trick is just getting out, stopping, you know. Yeah. Moving on. Dude, why, why do everyone have? Why does everyone fall when they're getting chased in a horror movie? Are you kidding me? Come on, like every, oh, like every, every single every time it drives me crazy. But you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't get it. Let me run down this fucked up trail, or I could jump in the river and swim away. You know. Well, it's really simple, dude. It's it's the riders. Well, yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, it cracks me up. You know, people t the, the, watching a movie. He goes, "Why did he do that?" Because yeah. they, they wrote it in the script. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right here on page thirteen. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. You know, or the producers like, ah, got to cut that scene. Uh, oh, she trips because we can't afford the Lincoln crashing into the cutlass. Yeah, 
So now she's going to fall and like get scared by a cat. Then she's going to walk into Le- Leather Wolf's practice room and there's going to be three serial killers that are on their way out the door. <laughs> <laughs> With machetes. Yeah. <laughs> Just killing everybody on their way out. Yeah. That's hilarious, though. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, yeah, man. Well, thank you for your time. Uh, it's been a pleasure. And, you didn't uh, talk about the record that much. Oh, well, let's talk about it now. Well, do you have any questions about it? Is there anything you want to know? Well, not you. You didn't listen to it. No, but I've just always been a fan of Leatherwolf, you know. Jason and Fred. Yeah, yeah I remember signing Freddie's little CD and sending it off to him. I, I'm glad yeah, she did, it, dude. You know. Yeah, and and, and uh, check your uh, check your bank account. I downloaded a bunch more uh, Leatherwolf songs today <laughs> off iTunes. So you got a. All you got to do is call me, dude, and I'll send them to you for free. There now. Well, now you do. Well, all right. I will. I will. I don't you think got, I charged you for the CD. Yet. Didn't I send you that for free? You did. There you go, there was postage due, but that's okay. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did, and you signed it for me, so it's awesome. It's a great CD. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's the word record, about you, uh, you know, uh, I think it's it keeps Leatherwolf, you know, in the game of of good players, you know? Yeah. And if you come see us, we're going to be good. You know, we're going to play old stuff, new stuff, and um, just cover the gamut, you know? Not just play mm-hmm. 80s stuff, you know? I'll right. be there on the 23rd. I'll be there on the 23rd, buddy, at the whiskey. Well, cool, man. And, you know, V, just go listen to the record a little bit. Oh, I will. I do, I'm doing a rec, uh, music festival that I'm emceeing this weekend for kids. Uh, it actually raises money to put instruments in their hands for kids who don't have access to music programs. Yeah. So I've been running around all week grabbing instruments and amps from people and cleaning shit. And I also work two jobs and do this. And so I, did, I literally. I'm a, I'm a roofer, dude. Yeah, I work on roofs in 90 degrees, yeah. eight hours God, a day. God bless you. Yeah, that's, that's where I got my tan. Man. You see my tan? That's where you got to, Yeah, you are tan. tan. I'm tan, man. <laughs> I'm no. officially I'm a professional tanner. There you go. <laughs> and, it's no, still, gonna, and you got to be in great shape to still be roofing, you know, over four. Well, I, 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 I swim and I play water polo and I work out, you know. I do stuff. Yeah. Nice. And, um, yeah, so the production on the record, um, I recorded it. And um, with help from some of my other friends, but it's Randy Burns that made it sound killer. Yeah. Randy Burns. Don't forget that name because he is the man. And, and you know, when you're playing with, like, guys like Rob Math, who just play killer, and Barry yeah. Sparks, and Keith Adamiak, you know, you just mm-hmm. you really can't go wrong, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah, just get good levels and, and, and you know. Just get the performance. And, and mix it. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's one drums, guy we didn't like, touch like, on is your, your new lead singer. Where would you get your new lead singer from? Keith, um, off, I just saw him singing on the internet, and my, one of my friends knew him. He told me about him, and he called him. And the next day, he came over and sang "Behind the Gun." No, he sang um, "Only the Wicked." And me and Robbie and my wife just go, "He's the man." <laughs> yeah, I wish we, I wish we would have, I wish we would have found him like in 1981. Right. <laughs> <laughs> See, the bummer is he would only be like one years old. You know, so yeah. you know, right. we'd be slapping him silly trying to get him to sing. You know, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you, you have no idea day. how hard it was for us to find a singer and how many people sang for Level before Mikey oh, yeah. just agreed to learn how to do it and just become, you know, the main dude for singing, you know. Yeah. Yeah, well it's tough too. It's tough to find, you know, especially, you know, um somebody that can pull off that type of vocals as well, you know. Yeah. So but you know, things work out how they work out. One way yeah. or another it's gonna it's tomorrow's showing up, you know. Yep, you're right. Absolutely. Well, thanks for I'm keeping it. That, um, I'm just glad that I was able to be part of something cool, you know. That yeah. Life, you know. Well, it's you know, like you meet up to the old, the old standard of what we used to do, you know. Right. But you know, guys our age too that you know that still love that that style of music. I mean, I love that guys like you are still doing it. You know what I mean? That that we still have new stuff to look forward to. Yeah. Um, well, I think you guys appreciate music a little bit more than the younger generation, you know? Oh, for Absolutely. sure. And people yeah. don't know the, the literal sacrifice. People go, oh, give me a break. No. Well, and, 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 and especially especially guys that can play good. Right. right. You know, and and, and and to see it and and just to hear it, just go, God, that's just cool, you know? Because yeah. I, yeah. I don't see it that much, you know? Right. Yeah. yeah but 
I'm sure it's out there somewhere. I just wish I knew where it was. You know, people are like, yeah. oh, these guys are making all this kind of. I'm like, no, they're not in like a, a million dollar tour bus, man. These guys are minivan in it and like pulling trailers and shit. It's not glamorous. Yeah. They're doing it because they love it. You know, that's the bottom yeah. line. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's tricky business, man, going on the road for a year. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a bit of work, dude. You have yeah. fun for a little while, then you're like, oh, another town, one more show. Ugh. Right. Right. Yeah. Unless you love the music, you know. No, right. Another yeah. box of pizza. Another yeah. box of pizza. Yeah. Oh, look, this Denny's has a different paint job. <laughs> what town am I in? Yeah. Where are we playing? Right. Yeah, location ain't vacation. That's what people never know. No, no, no. But it is fun to play, dude. You know, it's kind of cool to go out yeah. and play. Yeah, absolutely. And right. uh, so, I mean, you guys got a, you got new stuff that you're working on as well since the last album? No, we're just finishing up some other stuff that we didn't finish up to release uh, another record towards the end of the year of old stuff. And then mm-hmm. uh, we're going to release the, the first record again next year. And um, me and Robbie started uh, just coming up with ideas to, to write again because uh, that was a task writing that record, you know, and getting yeah. it done. Yeah. So we're just trying to figure out what direction to move in, you know? Right. Okay. But we're working on it. Sounds great, man. Right on, dude. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Dean, for joining us. We really appreciate it. And when you're in Chicago, I definitely want to hook up with you, see a show. Or if you're here on other business, let's go grab a beer. And I'd love to say if you're ever in South Carolina, but I'm guessing that's probably not happening. <laughs> well, my friend's actually going to get rid of another serial killer. He's going out to um, South Carolina to visit his friends. It's Tim Wilson. I don't know. Have you ever heard of Jackson Guitars? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he was like the main guy that designed those things. Yeah. He's, oh, he's wow. a guitar wizard. Yeah. He's going wow. out there. <laughs> okay. South well, Carolina. I'm in, the, I'm in the Greenville area. I'm like right between Atlanta and Charlotte. So. Well, hey, um, send me your guys' email and I'll, and I'll send you some of the, the stuff I have recorded and mixed and mastered. Oh, you know, so oh, you can cool. hear some of the Killer. old stuff. Just don't release it, you know? Oh, no, yeah. No, not at all. Yeah. You got my email? Uh, no, Fred does. does. Uh, well, I got it. I'll, I'll get it to him. I'll get yeah, it yeah. So send me your artists. I don't know. Did I send you the, the other songs, Fred? No. No, you haven't. I didn't? No. Okay. Well, send me I'll shoot email. you an email. I'll shoot you an email tonight to remind you. Okay, cool, dude. And and then uh, I'm gonna try this. I don't know if it's gonna work. I'm gonna try it. You see behind me, I got all these autographs. I'm gonna see, see if I can get this drumstick. Oh, it's not gonna work. Here. Let me hand you this drumstick. You can sign it. It looks pretty good. And I'll hand it back. back. <laughs> Look at that. I got a D. Roberts autographed drumstick. How about nice. it? Right on. Well, I have to go. It uh, sounded better when I thought that out. But, I have to go <laughs> grab the it's RV. Work. You just do your editing magic. Yeah. <laughs> Slow it down. Whoa. Let's speed it up. So I'll send you an email with these guys, and then uh, you can send me whatever you want to send me. And I will okay. see you on the 23rd. I'll be there. Cool, with man. My leather Wolf shirt. Right on. Do you got a Leather Wolf shirt? Did I send you one too? I'm going to. Uh, can you? I was going to order send you one. one. I'll put that in the email to send me one. Okay. Yeah, got to be here on the twenty. The shirt and the CD, you know, to guys like you, you know. I got the CD. I need the uh, I need the shirt now, and uh, anything what else you got. You're not worthy, dude. We'd be <laughs> happy to. You're the man. We want you back again, man. Yeah. Right on, dude. I'm. It's always my pleasure. Anything you yeah. got going on, man? We're you, the doors open. You're part of the pod family. You're welcome. We've enjoyed your music for decades, and we hope to enjoy your music for many more years to come. Well, thank Absolutely. you very much for having me, guys. Absolutely. Right. Thank you. Rock Thanks, Steve. Everybody, go buy Leatherwolf merch. Go buy Leatherwolf music. Go buy some tickets if they're in a town near you. Yeah. And uh, love you, brothers, and thank you, Dean, yeah, for dedicating uh, your life to music Thanks, so people can smile on the weekend. Cheer up, guys. Uh, Stay with